What's up, people? James Murphy here, back with another Python video. And this time, a question for you. Does Python contain any empty, truthy objects? Now, what do I mean by those terms? Well, we say that x is truthy if, when I put x in an if statement, you would find that it goes inside the if statement. So if it prints out truthy here, then we say x is truthy. Otherwise, we would say x is falsy. And by empty, I mean if we try to iterate over x, say for item in x, let's print something out. If we find that nothing is printed out in the for loop, then we say that x is empty. So can you come up with any empty, truthy objects? If you think of something, let me know down in the comments. If you need a moment to think about it, pause the video now. And we're back. Did you come up with any empty, truthy objects? Well, let's try a few things. Let's look at the empty list. Nope, that's empty, but it's not truthy. What about the empty dictionary? Nope, empty, but not truthy. What about the empty tuple? Once again, empty, but not truthy. Well, here's my answer. Let's take an empty generator. So we'll say x is the generator comprehension uh, score for score in empty list. When we run this, we see indeed that x is truthy, but it's also empty. So this is a fun little thing to know about, but would you ever actually ever need an empty truthy object? Well, I made this video because I actually needed it. So consider the following situation. Suppose that there is um, a library that you're using. And this library, you know, it does something. And it takes in um, to this do something function um, some options. And these options are optional. Um, and so they give it a default value of none. So if you want to pass in your own options, then you just pass them in at the time that you call the function. And then inside their function, they have some defaults. Um, so they would say, if options, um, or rather, they would say, if not options, you know, options equals, uh, let's just say they have, um, you know, some defaults, option one, one, and that's their only default. And then, you know, they do something uh, with those options. Well, the library implementer here has made a somewhat common mistake if they've done this. Namely, what they wanted to do was check to see if you passed in something for options. But what they actually did was check to see if options was falsy. So in that case, they've missed something. What if I wanted to pass in the set of empty options? So what if I wanted to say do something with options being the empty dictionary? Well, if the code is as it is above, since the empty dictionary is falsy, you would find that my empty dictionary would be rewritten with their default options. But if I wanted an empty dictionary to be there, then uh, the library implementer has made a mistake. Really, what they should have done is check to see if options um, is none, which is different than checking if it's falsy. 
but you can't always control the code that other people write, of course. So in my case, uh, I was stuck with that. That's how the function worked. It checked to see if not options. It didn't check to see if options was not none. So in that case, I wanted to pass in something empty so that when they iterated over the options, there wouldn't be anything there. But it needed to be truthy so that it didn't get overwritten by the defaults. So in this case, we could just say options is equal to this empty truthy object. And just so you can see it run, let's print out the options here. Let me reformat that. Now, when I run it, you see that um, the option that gets printed is this generator object. Whereas if I had tried to just pass in an empty dictionary like I really wanted, I would see that the options get overwritten. So that's the case where I needed an empty truthy object. Have you ever needed such an object? Let me know down in the comments. Hey guys, thanks again for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you'd like to learn Python from me, I actually offer full-length nine-week courses that are live and online twice a week where you can learn Python from me. So if you'd like to, go ahead and drop your contact info at the Google form in the description, and I'll let you know whenever these courses are available. Thanks.